Good morning. Um, first of all, many thanks for Professor Fang Fang and Professor Fushu's kind invitation. And it's really my pleasure to deliver this talk. Um, so today we're going to talk about two particular um, 6G applications. Um, one is um, mobile edge computing, one is telehealth, where we, we're going to show how the principle of non-orthogonal model works that can be applied. For the, uh, the first one, uh, mobile edge computing or MEC, the key idea is the following. So uh, each task needs to, uh, let's say we have uh, multiple users here and we have one uh, base station. Now each user wants to compute some computational intensity, intensive and the latency critical task. But for many reasons, um, users do not want to compute the task locally. For example, maybe uh, this, uh, this user could be a sensor and then if we want them to carry out those uh, uh, deep learning tasks, then it's really hard for the sensor to carry out the task. So MEC offers the, the following opportunity. So each user can send their task to the base station, uh, which we call the offloading. And uh, then base station will or has a server, a MEC server, which will, carry, which will ca ca compute the task for the user. And then later on, the user can download the task from the uh, base station. So it's, 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 a, uh, it's a very useful concept. And uh, if we're using conventional orthogonal model access, uh, what will happen is following. Let's say we have two users. User M, uh, let's also assume that uh, this user, user M, his task is more urgent. And in that case, if we're using orthogonal model access like, uh, like a TDMA, right? So uh, the easy uh, way is, so we're going to serve with the user with a more urgent task first. So the user M will upload task first. And then uh, afterwards, uh, the user M uh, can start uploading. This strategy is a very simple, very, could be effective, but uh, it's also um, could be a problematic if, for example, the two user state lines are very close to each other. And in that case, uh, that, that means the user does not have, have much time to do offloading. So now if we're talking about uh, if the delay is the concern, right? So the principal normal can be applied as follows. So for the first DM second, um, in OMA case, we only allow user M to do offloading. Now, if we're applying normal, then we can encourage both users to do offloading simultaneously. And as a result, then and you don't really need to uh, spend extra time for your user offload. So the, the delay can the delay for of the offload uh, offloading can be reduced a lot. Now, if you are concerned not just delay but energy consumption, and here. We found out a more energy efficient strategy is following. Uh, we call it hybrid normal. Um, that means uh, user, uh, user M will just offload uh, as, if, as if user M does not exist. Right? So uh, you, uh, within the DM second, uh, user M will do offloading. Now for this DM second, we also encourage user N to do offloading. But on top of that, we're going to allocate some dedicated time slot. Uh, for user N to offload a task alone. Why would you call this a hybrid normal, right? So for example, if a user N uh, decides that uh, it will not uh, spend any power here, so that, that basically is pure OMA because uh, user N will only use this extra 10 seconds to do offloading alone, right? so that's OMA. Now, if user, user N decides that, okay, so, um, I'm not going to spend any uh, energy for the, this, uh, this TN seconds. Right? So in that case, uh, user N will offload only in the first DM second. So this is a pure normal. Then if user N decided to use both time slot and spend some uh, energy, so this is a hybrid normal. Now for this uh, two user uh, hybrid normal case, actually we, we did the uh, study probably three, uh, three years ago. And uh, we obtained a few uh, very interesting, uh, very concise uh, conclusions. First of all, now um, for this hybrid normal, it is always more energy efficient compared to pure normal. Right? Pure normal means that we're not going to use this TN second, right? just use DM second. 
So hypernormal actually is better than pure normal. Now, how can we compare hybrid normal and uh, pure OMA? Now, if we have two users, the, uh, the, the condition is very clear. If uh, user N's deadline is less than two times of user M's deadline, and in that case, you should do you should use hybrid normal. Otherwise, we should use OMA. But the, the reason behind this is also um, it, it's, it's quite obvious in the sense that if, if user N's deadline is very large, then there's no there's no point for you then to to transmit during the first DM second, which is going to be very noisy period. So is uh, so instead of using hybrid normal, just use an OMA. That's good enough. Then so this is uh, for the uh, for the two user scenario, and we have been uh, really spent quite a long time to think about how can we extend this uh, uh, protocol to. Uh, multi-user scenario, and also we want to see those, those uh, conclusions that were made for two-user case. Are they still valid for multi-user scenario? So what do we, um, so actually the, the extension for them uh, from two-user case to multi-user case, um, the protocol extension is easy. For example, you can easily just create this M seconds, and then you have M users. Now you, we are going to in, uh, invite the user with most urgent task uh, uh, upload first, right? and uh, meanwhile you can the other users can decide to spend the energy to do uploading if they want to. Now uh, at the end of a second time slot, we are going to force uh, user two to do. Uh, to finish this uploading and so on and so forth. So the protocol extension for this multi-user scenario is, is, is quite, quite simple. The hard part is uh, how can we uh, have some more insightful and con conclusion for this multi-user scenario. The challenging is because if you um, formulate this optimization problem, you can easily find this actually is a multi-objective optimization problem. And for the, such a multi-objective optimization problem, it's really hard to get the optimal solution. Um, so even you try to use from weighted sum, which means uh, scalarization, uh, again, the, um, the, the problem is non-convex. So what we did is following, uh, we actually just say, oh, how, how about we're going to solve this resource allocation in a successive manner, in the sense that uh, I'm going to um, find uh, the power allocation for user two first, and then um, uh, why assume that other users uh, uh, parameters are fixed. And then I move on to user three, user four, user five, so on and so forth. So in such a successive manner. By doing that, actually, we, we, we sort of, um, okay, so uh, it, it's just going to be a very uh, suboptimal uh, solution. But the good thing is that we can have some closed form solution. And then uh, when we use this closed close form solution to do some performance analysis, and we well, we, we get some interesting uh, result. For example, the first thing is we found that the, the, um, the suboptimal solution actually is optimal. It's a Pareto optimal uh, solution, which actually is very, very uh, surprising. Um, meanwhile, we can also uh, show that uh, hypernormal uh, also outperform pure normal in multi-user scenario, right? just like the two-user two -user case. However, uh, the comparison between hybrid normal and OMA actually become a bit more, uh, more complicated. Uh, for some special cases, we can prove that, uh, okay, so essentially, um, uh, so hybrid normal can outperform OMA if the deadline is not big. Right? So if your deadline is very urgent, then you should use hybrid normal. Uh, but uh, how, how to really get a bit more uh, general result? So we, uh, so our students are actually uh, are currently working on this. Hopefully, we can have a bit more concise conclusion for this, uh, for this aspect. All right. So okay. So uh, I think I only have uh, fifteen to twenty minutes. So I, I'm going to uh, rush to the second part, uh, which is about the terahertz. So uh, apparently, um, uh, the use of terahertz for six is well motivated uh, because uh, uh, sub six sub six gigahertz is very crowded. So, the, but uh, in terahertz band, there's so so much bandwidth available. So, why we want to apply uh, normal to uh, terahertz network? 
So although we have uh, a lot of bandwidth available in Texas, um, but if you think about those in, those emerging um, uh, surveys, um, in patient for 60, for example, this uh, immersive AR and VR, and easily uh, the, the bandwidth available uh, in those uh, Texas band can be, will not be efficient then, and not be sufficient. So we need to talk about uh, how to improve the special the spectral efficiency of uh, the terahertz transmission. On top of that, you can find that uh, uh, the terahertz or transmitter has some interesting uh, features which can be used to uh, facilitate the uh, implementation of normal. So the first example I'm providing here is uh, uh, terahertz actually suffers this so-called misalignment uh, error. So misalignment happens, for example, uh, let, let's say the beams of the base station and um, uh, receive and the user and uh, not uh, align together. This could cause be by a lot of issue. For example, maybe uh, extreme case if the building of the uh, of the uh, the receiver is located and actually swing, uh, and then you can have this uh, misalignment. Now, once you have a misalignment, you're gonna find out that the band your your the data rate or the bandwidth efficiency were dropped like thirty dB. Um, so that, that is a, a big issue for terahertz. Now, we can so, so easily, for example, inject or in, introduce an additional secondary user into the picture, uh, for example, on those uh, beams which might suffer certain uh, beam uh, misalignment, then you can, you can add, uh, serve additional secondary user. By using NOMA, you can ensure that even if that uh, 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 misalignment happened, the spectral efficient of terahertz network is still um, maintained. Now, another example is, um, is something related to uh, a particular way we want to implement uh, NOMA. So we want to use NOMA as an add-on of a legacy network. So a legacy network means that you already have a network there. Right? So for the, this particular case, let's assume that you already have this uh, terahertz network. And we have this red color primary users they, and then we already uh, formed, configured these beams to serve this uh, uh, primary user. So this is the legacy network. So beams are fixed to, uh, and, and uh, designed to serve this primary user. Now, on top of that, we want to serve some additional users and uh, we don't want to change the legacy network. We don't want to change the configuration of the legacy network. So now, uh, essentially, that basically means that on each beam, on the, each of these configured beam, can we serve uh, uh, the additional user? Right? So essentially, that basically means the following. So can, can we use uh, this pre-configured special beam? As a bandwidth resources, right? So in this um, our latest work, we, we show that indeed these uh, these special beams can be used uh, just like OFDM subcarrier. You can use these special beams to accommodate these additional users. Right? So that basically means you are serving the additional user without consuming extra bandwidth resource. On top of that, you are not changing um, the legacy network, right? So that's transparency to those uh, uh, legacy primary users. But of course, this uh, this uh, this pre-configured uh, special beam also has uh, their limitations. For example, uh, for uh, for OFDM carriers, you, they are in the, they, they are uh, orthogonal, right? So and there's no interference between users uh, located at different uh, subcarriers. But for uh, these special beams, they actually are not not orthogonal. Um, okay, so you can also, you can form orthogonal beams for these primary users, but to to these uh, secondary users, this uh, this. Uh, it's a so-called orthogonal beams are actually no, no longer orthogonal. So then you're going to have this interbeam interference, which actually can cause certain performance degradation. And uh, in extreme case, you, you even find out that my performance actually will be degraded if we have more beams uh, available. Right? So, so um, uh, but, but overall, we are very excited for this uh, find out because that basically means uh, subcarrier allocation actually is an important direction. And, uh, uh, for same reason, you can feel that the beam allocation will be also very uh, important and uh, new, exciting uh, direction. But what's the difference between beam allocation and uh, subcarrier allocation? So uh, here I'll provide just uh, one, one specific example. So 
let's say we have multiple beams or multiple subcarriers. Now, if we, if we want to serve a single user, if it is all FDM, multiple subcarriers, that is easy. If this user will use all the subcarriers, then uh, you're going to use water filling to spread the user's energy uh, over all these uh, subcarriers. In, 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 for, for the beams, actually, this is not going to happen. Uh, you're going to find we can, we can show that you're only going to use one beam. Right? So, so this is the beam selection. Now, of course, this is all due to the inter beam interference and. Uh, um, that you can, uh, so how to really suppress the beam, this inter-beam interference, particularly to avoid this uh, extreme uh, drawback, like uh, more beams actually will give you less uh, performance gain, right? So what you can do is you can, you can, you can borrow a lot of uh, concept from cellular networks, for example, carrier, allocate, carrier aggregation. Then here we can, you can use a beam aggregation, right? So then you can, in that case, uh, you can really combat this inter-beam indifference, right? So be, because of time, I uh, will try not to get to the details, just to uh, uh, live on the high level. So, um, so this is my last slide. So, um, uh, so all those uh, uh, papers and uh, actually the, the MATLAB codes actually will be already available at GitHub. So you, you can always download them. If you need a copy of the slide, just send me an email. And on, uh, uh, last, I want to also mention that, uh, <clears throat> so the design of, uh, uh, we, we still have a long way to the design of next generation model access. And for that, uh, Atropoi uh, recently built this, uh, this ETI which is dedicated for uh, next generation model access. I mean, uh, this is supposed to be a platform for all of us to collaborate and exchange ideas. So if you are interested, uh, simply just um, uh, go to the website and then you can actually become a member and hopefully we can, we can see each other more frequently uh, in the future. Right. So that's all. Thank you very much. Then. Thank you.